In this video, I'm going to introduce you to web scraping in Python. The video is based on a blog post by Zineb Jiwa at the URL shown here. It's not uncommon to find data on websites that is useful, but not presented in a way that's easy to access. For example, there's no CSV file or there's no API that gives you a plug-in to that data. This is the website Zineb uses in her example. It has data in a table on the popularity of different breeds of dogs. How do we scrape this data? Well, first of all, it's important to understand what the actual data looks like. Web pages are marked up with HTML. In Google Chrome, we can right click on a page and click View Source, or we can right click on any element and choose Inspect. And you can see what we have is a table. And in that table, we have a T head and then a TR, that's a table row and then TH is for the different years, 2014, 13, and 9. And then below the T head, a T body. And that's broken up into TRs. And each of those has four TDs in it. Those are table rows with table data cells in them. And those are the rankings for the different breeds of dogs in different years. So our goal is to get at that data with Python. The first thing she does is import the necessary modules. Beautiful Soup is a library for pulling data out of HTML. So because our data is structured as HTML, we're going to need to use that to get at the actual contents. We'll use the request module to actually get the data, and we'll use the pandas library to create our structure. So the URL of that web page that we just looked at is shown here. And then we use request.get URL and assign that to a variable r. That variable will have a text property, r.text, and we'll assign that to data. So that's our data. And if we split this cell, I'm using IPython notebooks here, and then output just data at that point, you can see that that has our HTML code in it. This is the same as viewing the source of the web page. I'm going to hide that. And then I'm going to merge this back up and get rid of that data. So we then use Beautiful Soup to take that data and put it in an HTML structure. We assign that to Soup. And Beautiful Soup allows you to choose which parser you'd like to use. I chose LXML here as the parser. If you leave it blank, it'll just choose a default parser. And it usually gets it right. But it might give you a warning. And so by explicitly stating that I want to use LXML, I avoid that warning. The soup object has a find all method, and you can pass it a tag to get all the different tags of that type from the HTML. Now, when Zineb did this, there were two tables, and the table we were looking at was the second one on the page. It's now the first table on the page, so we have the zeroth. We're using the zero index to get at that table. One of the problems with parsing HTML pages is you never know if they're going to change. In this case, this one changed in a couple ways. Uh, one of them is, is making this table the first table on the page. So we assign that table, that first table that's found on the page, to the table variable. And then we use find all again on the tables variable to find the third and beyond table rows. So this two colon is slicing. It means we want to start with the third row and get all the remaining rows. We get all those rows and we assign them to the rows variable. We then create a data dictionary, which has breeds, rank 2014, rank 2013, and rank 2009 properties. And we start them out each with an empty list. Now this is another change that was made since Zineb did her post. The years have been updated. So the next thing is to loop through all those rows, all those table rows, in the data and to append to our lists. So for row and rows, cows gets row.findAllTD. So it's going to find all of those table data cells. And you remember there were four of them in each row. The first table data cell contains the breed, the second one, the rank in 2014, the third, the rank in 2013, and the fourth in rank 2009. So we use the getText method of each of those objects to get the text that's in the table data cell. And we append that to the list. The last two steps here are to create a pandas data frame from the data and assign that to dog data. 
and then use the two CSV method of that data frame to create a CSV. I'm going to add one thing at the bottom. I'm just going to output dog data and run this. And you can see that it outputs it in a nice table. I'll also show you CSV and I've opened it up here in Excel. And there you have it, a basic intro to web scraping. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks to Zanabe for letting us use her post as a basis for this video. Check out our other articles at the URL shown here.